going on guys shady at jd's custom buggies uh, next project this one i'm excited about um just got it back from the welder so basically what i've got going on here is um for some time i've had a couple of 232 kits sitting in the shop and been wondering what to do with them and one of my plans was to use one in I have a three-wheel Mad Dog scooter that I was going to do the whole thing on, but because of um, time and life and everything that's going on, I haven't gotten around to that. So I have been thinking about some time about how I'd want to adapt 232 to a buggy and um, came up with an idea. So I literally, what you're looking at here is this is a long case scooter engine. That's the only way that the 232 kits are available from SSPG. In fact, not just SSPG, because I made the inquiries, but there are no 232 short case um, cases. So, um, I talked to the guy at SSPG and asked him what would be the chance of getting some made up, one made up. We did more than one. How many would I need to buy? And he expressed to me that he'd already asked and inquired and that the company, the, you know, the factory in Taiwan that makes the cases has no interest in doing a short case um, version. So my next idea was, okay, well, suppose I took an A case and, and redrilled the holes for the cylinder. And after going through all that and doing the inspection on that and there's really no way to to space out the studs on the A case that the studs would be where they need to be and then rebore the case. Um, not only that, but there is an oil port in the side where, you know, in every GY6 motor that you would basically be cutting right through that to put a larger cylinder in. So that scrapped that idea. And then after looking at it further, I didn't know how possible it was. I said, well, suppose we cut the case in half, sewed it back together. I mean, a couple people had asked me, because uh, I had run it, run it through some friends here locally, and, you know, I got one from the CNC machine, and, and, you know, is there a way to do this, do that? How? Would... And he's like, well, why don't you just cut it and re-weld it? And I said, yeah, why don't I think about that? So, um... The next step was, if I cut it, reweld it, how to get this thing to line back up as far as the um, as far as the pulleys, you know, the crankshaft pulley with the uh, with the uh, the driven pulley, the output shaft for the clutch. And so, after really taking a good look at these cases and then comparing them with like the regular A case, realized that because I really don't work too much on long case machines, so. I'm not super familiar with it. There's some things about it that are quite a bit different. Um, one thing I noticed was that all the holes on both ends lined up with a CVT cover, except that the long case machine or the long case version has an extra set of holes. So I was like, okay, well, the dowel pin is here. The other bolt holes there. If we took out that middle section, maybe I could use the CVT cover to line it back up and, and, and get it to... You know, so everything's straight and it should line up pretty much perfect again. Um, we took a bunch of measurements and um, came up with we needed to remove that much. So roughly, I don't remember what the measurement is, but it's roughly an inch and a half worth. So we cut her in half and then I bolted it back up to a CBT cover and boom, she ended up being the same length. So... Um, I have a TIG welder and I haven't had the chance to sit there and teach myself to TIG yet. Um, so we did, we, we cut some cases in half, some scrap motors, and then went to town and tried. And what we found is, you know, with the casts and whatnot, we we're blowing holes through it and, and couldn't get it to weld upright. But we did know that it was possible to weld them. I've had cases welded before for other things that were, you know, broke here and there in the past. So I said, this is a job for my good friend Doug Kirk down the street. At, uh, Kirk's Welding and Fabrication, because Doug is pretty much the best welder I know in the area. Um, guy's an artist. 
So I brought him my two halves sewed together by a CVT cover all bolted up and said, hey, bud, I need to weld this together and if we could brace it up a little bit, that'd be awesome. So uh, I just got this delivered yesterday and, um, and then we were off. So basically what he did was he got it fully welded and then I asked him, I said, this space in between here gets no use at all. If you want to weld a plate in here just for added strength, and it looks like he took a quarter inch piece of uh, aluminum, it might even be three eighths, it's pretty thick. And then I asked him to tie a gusset in, in the bottom. Um, I figured there's nothing down here that gets, that's in the way of the chain, um, you know, nothing in use, so we could just tie that all together to, to reinforce it a little more. So he just got this back to me. Now I posted pictures of it, actually posted some pictures of it cut in half and this and that and the other thing. And when I got it back, I posted some pictures in some of the buggy groups on Facebook. You know, I had one guy goes, would have been cheaper just, you know, or, or at least that's cheaper than getting a short case. And I'm like, no, that's not why I did it. Um, you know, or why didn't you just buy a short case? Or why didn't you just buy a motor or the cases? I have cases. I, I trip over cases over there. I've got, I got cases brand new in a box because I'm building motors uh, constantly. They do not make a B case. And that's what this is, really, is a B case. Um short GY6. It's not, um, as far as I know, nobody produces them. Uh, somebody with a CNC machine, I've seen some billet cases and stuff like that, they could probably produce one. But as far as right now, you can't, there's nowhere to buy it. I've looked. Um, I've looked. I've talked to the guys who bring these stuff, bring this stuff in the country. It's just not out there. So basically, what it came down to is if I wanted something that was bolt right into a buggy, um, and want to try and do it as a 232 that I was just going to have to take matters into my own hands, come up with my own ideas, and, and boom. So that's what we have here. Now, what's so different about this as far as um, the cases itself? Because right now, other than the big fat round portion, which is different than the AKG Y6, um, what's so different about it? Well, we got different stud spacing. That's wider. It's a lot wider. It's so wide that... The casting here is different. Um, the bridge here, like if you board this, this is already set up for a 67 millimeter cylinder. If I were to attempt to bore this on an A case, I would be through this part right here that holds this uh, together. I'd be in, and that's the galley for the uh, for the cam chain and the guides. I would be in there. There would be nothing left here. Not only that, is this the bore is so big on this case, is that, and all these bolt holes line up with an A case. And there's a bowl hole. Now, the dowel pin, they actually drilled and added a lip here um, so they can add a separate hole for the dowel pin. Normally on the A case, the dowel pin and then the bolt goes through it. You know, the hole is bigger. They, the bolt hole is below it, and then the dowel pin is above it. All right, so that's how much bigger that is, and that's why this was the route to go. Um, as far as other differences, like I said, this... This portion here is a lot bigger. It has to do, I guess, you know, like I'm not super scooter knowledgeable. But I knew, do know that the long cases and the short cases, basically why, why they come in two different versions on a scooter, is because some scooters have smaller wheels. And then, like, you, you know, like a 10-inch wheel, that'd be a short case. Anything bigger than a 10-inch, it'd be a long case. And the reason for that is, is your wheel mounts up here on your scooter. You know, where, uh, as on a buggy... You slap a sprocket on its outputs, but um, output sprocket. But this is basically where the wheel slides onto, and there's usually a brake assembly in here for drum brakes. So on both versions. So I don't know why this is bigger. I would just attribute it. It's bigger uh, drum on the larger wheel. I'm guessing. So that that's why this round part is 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 larger. So I got the case back yesterday, and then I had to do some prep because I obviously wasn't going to just put a hanger on here like you know like you find on your yurf dogs and whatnot and then break the back of the case off this motor when it's done has a claimed 27 horsepower at the crank all right so I can imagine that anything I strap this into when it's done if it runs is going to take a lot more abuse including the back of the engine case so the next step was okay I got to do some case prep I stuck it in the mill I milled all of all the stuff down, all the brake 
um, bosses that were, you know, molded into the case and, and ground it flat and basically had to come up with a race case for this. The race case normally, the race case plates that I normally have are made for an A case, you know, for your normal short case. So you can see the difference of where I'm at. So this is my template plate. Um, when I make up new ones and this hole doesn't line up with the mount hole and the hole down here doesn't mount up with this hole So what I had to do is take a blank and then add some extra metal to it So we welded some ears on it. Um, I didn't mill it down because this plate is 3 8 thick and I need it to be like a quarter for the uh, For the hanger to fit so I milled it down um, And basically figured out where all my holes would go drilled the holes installed the case I do, you notice there's a bunch of, well, I don't know if you can notice or not, but it, there's a bunch of black silicone in here. I use that to basically cushion it. I don't like taking the aluminum, putting steel right to it, and then bolting it down as tight as I can. So the the silicone underneath serves two purposes. A, there's a couple of holes in the gearbox now, this one and this one. So A, it seals up those holes when the bolt, when the bolt goes through it, and B, it cushions it. So when I do, um, you know, hammer it down with an impact and get it as tight as I can that I don't have too uh, a brittle um, not so strong surface against a, a piece of steel plate and where it could tend to crack so and it also serves as like a cushion you know to, to, to absorb some of the stress so um, got that on went ahead and installed the transmission um, I happened to go with the TFC uh, billet gearbox cover um, I figure this is going to probably be the most expensive motor I've built thus far in the shop. So why not give it everything it can have? The nice thing about this is that it is stronger than the stock cast piece. It's a little bit heavier, but it's stronger. Um, there's no, there's going to be no cracking on here. So it actually serves as, as a strengthening point, just like when you put your CBT cover on this half of the motor. To keep it from breaking in half and that's why scooter guys when they don't run a cbt cover they use those ankle biter covers um because it's a strengthening point you have to have something here to keep this motor from breaking in half so that will just strengthen up and sure up the back half of that motor also um at this point everything's prepped um i need to stick the seals in bushings in uh have a little bit of work to go but this is where I'm at thus far, so once I get some room on the table here, we'll start putting this together. Um, I'm very excited about this. I am going to go kind of slow with the assembly. I have never installed, so what we're talking about is, I'm in uncharted territory here because we're using a 67 millimeter cylinder, and we have a stroker crank with an 8.2 millimeter stroke on it, giving you 232 cc's. Um, I'm not quite sure until I get the crank drive fit in here. Um, I'm going to have to wash the inside of both both sides of the casting, make sure I don't have any rub in it. Um, I want everything to be free. I don't want the crank to swing back and hit anything. I don't know. I'm kind of kind of going by when I used to race cars, and, and trust me, I'm not an auto mechanic, but I had sat in with a, with a you know, the guys who used to build the motors and whatnot because I wanted to learn as much as possible and like there was a couple motors that we had done 383 strokers um, that we had tried out not legal but um, what I learned was how a stroker how, how the whole stroker crank assembly works um, basically on a car when you buy the crankshaft you buy the appropriate pistons what they do is they actually move the wrist pin hole up in the piston so grabbing a piston if this was like a car piston the hole here where the wrist pin goes in was actually up higher in the ring gills to make up for how much extra rod you had um with the gy6s kind of do the opposite the piston is no different but what we do is we space the jug up and so um i'm imagining that i'm probably gonna have to use a spacer on this um i do have some bk spacers so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, and I don't even know the 232, the, the big crank might have came with a spacer. I'm not sure yet. I haven't opened those boxes. Um, but that's where we're at so far. I'm going to go ahead and install these bushings, the seals, get it ready. And we'll start looking at the crank and see how it fits in there. And we'll go from there.
All right, we got our bushings in, we got our seal in. I went ahead before I put the cam chain in there and dropped the crank in, put the other half on with the gasket. And so far, I don't see any issue with anything hitting. So I went ahead and stuck the cam chain in there. I'm trying to be as gentle with this as possible. Um, got the cam chain in there. It's 48 link cam chain. We opened some boxes just to kind of get refreshed with these parts and the head is pretty tall. All right, so hoping this slips right in. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Hylomar. pins in there. This one's, this one's stuck. There we go. That's why I don't wear gloves. Anyway, this stuff washes off with water anyway, so it's not as bad as like an RTE would be. Just take my finger and kind of It's starting to get tacky now. Get our gasket. I'm trying to be careful because this gasket is also different than a normal AKS gasket because of that lip we talked about with the extra dowel pin. The last thing I want to do is mess that gasket up.
And again, this isn't really, it's not RTV. Um, it's basically a gasket adhesive. Um, but what we'll do is, any imperfections in the case, basically, we'll fill them. But I found that motors that have higher crank crankcase pressure going on, this helps a lot. So I just got into habit with using it on a center gasket because who really wants to take a whole motor apart to replace one gasket? So just just a little insurance. Something I've gotten into habit of doing. Not cheap stuff. It's like twenty five dollars a tube. Um, and apparently, after doing some reading, um, they use it on aircraft motors. So I figure if it's good for an aircraft motor, it's good for this. Gonna hit this for a little air, so I don't have to wrestle this on. And that's just getting the bearing cold. Hopefully I can slip this on with a little effort. Okay. Grab myself two bolts. to rethink this one because this bolt is different. It looks to be a lot longer and actually okay so this half of this case is different and we have an extra hole here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to grab the stator cover to see if there's a hole the bolt goes through everything. So here's where we're different with this cover. Normally the hole is here, and there's a separate bolt that goes in the front of the cases to hold them together. What I'm noticing here is I can't put this other bolt in until I get this cover in. And then this cover basically, or this bolt here will sandwich this cover through the this case half down to the the other case half. So, as of right now, I can only put this one bolt in. So. But I do have two dowel pins in there, so it shouldn't be an issue. All right. So for now, I'm just gonna rotate the motor, make sure so you can Make sure I got the chain on the crank. Yes. Are we on there? Yes, we are. Okay. So at this point, I need to put an oil seal in this guy. Go ahead and install our starter clutch oil pump and get that going. Um, so this one bolt is basically going to hold all of this together until we get that bar. All right. So um, I had some decisions to make. So. Um, talking to Matt at uh, Parts for Scooters, where I buy my parts from, um, they were, uh, when we first talked about this, he said, definitely, most probably, going to want to run an oil cooler. Um, I hate oil coolers. 
I don't run anything. I don't run any localism my stuff. So had a decision to make, and this is how I'm gonna go here. So that's a stock oil pump. I guess the best way is to kind of set them next to each other, so you can kind of see the difference. So here's a stock oil pump, and when that little thing for the sprocket, the little hub that fits in there, um, goes in there, and the sprocket goes on top of that, she's dead even with the crank sprocket where it's supposed to be, the crank gear. Um, and this is the, so I have two high volume oil pumps here. One is kind of stock appearing. I had bought this, I don't know where I bought it. I must have bought it on eBay thinking that it was the same height as the stock one, but it's not. So it's truly a high oil, you can tell it's a high volume oil pump because you can see as they sit on the table, this one's taller. So that being the case, I pulled that out to check it out because I had bought them and they were sitting on my bench and I never, I, I intended them on using on uh, one on mine, but thought better against it, just put a stock one in. So the reason why I shy away usually from using the high, uh, high volume oil pump, because the ones that I sell are the Coso. Nice, nice looking piece. And again, that's thick also. So what this is gonna do is basically offset a little bit the pitch that the chain goes on the sprocket. Running an oil cooler, I would say this is probably the way to go. Um, and I've had conversations with Matt about this part for scooters, and they used to use them on their drag bikes. Never had them had an issue with their drag bikes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead for the first time ever. I'm going to go ahead and stick the Coso in here. Um, I have a feeling what's going to happen is I'm going to need to rig up the guard. So let me go ahead and get this in. Now there's no up or down arrow. But if you look at the stock one with the arrow, where the arrow is, all right, there's an arrow pointing up right there. You don't want to put that in upside down. Well, that's basically at the same angle, and you see the little dot that it's pointing to? There's the same dot there, because there's no up or down arrow that I can see on here. So we're going to drop that in like that. Bolt holes. All right. Grab myself an oil pump changer. you can see there's a slight just a slight angle on the chain there's a slight pitch to it I have been assured that this is not an issue so I'm gonna roll with it I just figured motor like this if you run an oil cooler probably a high volume oil pump would be best to our next issue, I believe, which will be, uh, get myself a guard, shield. So that being said, when you, when you put this guy on there, I want to say it's going to rub the nut. All right, because it's slightly higher. So what I am going to do is I'm going to shim it up with a couple of washers instead of the nut wearing a hole in this thing. So let me grab a couple of washers.
So I got two six millimeter washers here. Pull one over here. I don't feel the nut rubbing now, so that makes me feel a little bit better. I just don't think that would be a good thing. So next we will drop in our starter clutch. First red on this. Hold on to the rod. seal Okay. 
plus ones are for the strap, so. On the A case, there's usually a bolt in there that's about that long holding this bottom. So, this is actually serving two purposes anyway, because like I said, we're missing the extra bolt, but it is a lot longer than on the A case. Last two bolts we're going to wait until we get the stator in place, put our woodruff key back in. Have Alright, so we're at the point now, we're going to start tidying some stuff up before we dive into the top end. First thing we need to put a stator on, best of the best right there, best company to deal with.
have enough of that. First time I've installed one of these. Comes with a sticker. Oh. The fanciest packaging I've ever seen. Check this out. Velcro. That is good. Badass right there. You can save the box and use it for any dandy stuff. Alright, so apparently the plate comes off separate on this, which is kind of cool because it allows you to clock this however you want. So if you ever notice when you put your starter in, and the carburetor's in the way, so from what I gather, I should be able to clock this out of the way so it's not in the way. The wire is not in the way of the uh, carburetor. What kind of screws we got here? Itty bitty pounds. Smaller than that. So let's see. Imagine if we go this way. That's one way to tell. Yeah. So if we put it that way, that should put our wire down behind the starter, or wire down be yeah in the back of the motor. I'm gonna try it that way. It just seems like a cool concept. That way you should be able to connect and disconnect your starter wire without it being in the way. Three millimeter. It's a pretty small island. Okay. Okay. Get my 
himself a couple bolts for that guy. That alone, that feature makes me want to, and I love my Banjing starter. I've had it for a couple years now. This is new to us, the Shin Yi starter. But that alone makes me want to consider switching. That is a cool idea. stuff at this. Like I said, this is probably the most expensive motor I've probably ever built. Okay. Um, I would say the next bet would be let's get the cam chain guides in. Got it over here. Now, this is something that isn't typical GY6 either. It's sold. SSPG sells them. You can buy them separately. They come in a complete kit. I did buy separate components, so I'm wondering at what point, because um, I had three kits that I had purchased because the kits were selling out so quick. Um, but then when I wanted to come up with this concept and wanted to cut a case in half and everything, I decided to buy a separate set of cases and buy the parts that I thought I would need separate. So crankshaft, cylinder, head, guides the chains already stock um so therefore i don't know if i'm going to run into an issue somewhere along this build at this point and run out of something that i didn't count on but these guides are especially for the 232 kit they're sold separately that way they come in the kit that way so um they're not your typical and probably what's going to make a difference is the length because uh, we're gonna get into some pretty tall territory between the head and the jug. Not so much the jug, but the head. step is going to be putting the studs in and in the jug okay so I got the studs out I'm going to install the studs um, I was just looking at these things they're, they're pretty beefy studs actually um, the body of the stud seems to be pretty thick so of course you get a full set your two longer ones are going to go on this side on your game chain side um, just trying to orient the uh, threads here because there seems to be more threads on top so I'm going to put the the shorter threaded side into the block and get some dowel pins plug that in plug that in Inside the other Alpin. Okay, that happens a lot because I keep it tough. Very keep a little thing with all the Dalpins in. Sometimes one will pick, pick up a hitchhiker. It makes sense that if motor has that much power it does make sense that these studs are a lot beefier than a stock stud so, 19 
Let me suck it. Yeah, definitely the, the shorter threads go into the block. Let's make sure, because I have all these. Maybe we'll go a little deeper with these. Again, here's where we're getting into uncharted territory. Reason being, I don't know if we're going to have to space this up. My thoughts were yes, but I don't see any supplies, spacers. Not that I would with the cylinder because they don't know what crank you're going to be using it with. So, all right. I don't see piston rings. I'm assuming the way it feels, the rings are on it. Really, the first good look. Kind of looks like it's ceramic coated. Yeah, the rings are definitely installed on this. There is an arrow, and I'm going to want to look at the head. So this is, the head that's going to go on is a four valve head, and I'm not super familiar with the Yamaha Cygnus, but apparently it's a copy of the Yamaha Cygnus, and the stud holes are, you know, it's a copied head and then redrilled for a B case. So what I want to do real quick is I have some reliefs. I just want to look at the head and see where I'm at as far as where the how the valve would. Alright. So if you haven't seen my 232 video that I did last year when I unboxed it and did nothing but unbox it and look at the parts. Um, this is the head. Um, so Obviously, intake, exhaust, intake valves, exhaust valves. Obviously, even though the valves are all smaller than normal because you have to fit four where two would go. Um, 
there's our intake valves because they are a little bit larger. So, isn't that pretty? So let's take another look at our piston. So I'm going to assume, judging by the piston and the valve reliefs, Got it upside down right now, don't I? Okay. So, I would have to assume arrow needs to point down, judging by the size of the reliefs in the piston. Okay. So the arrow points towards the exhaust side. Kind of nice, I don't have to ram. Eliminate the step. But, Only way I don't see myself needing a spacer is if the cylinder is taller than normal. So what I'm gonna do is probably just stock or grab a stock cylinder. And that wrist pin is definitely its own thing. Just for sake of fun comparison. I've got one sitting here somewhere. So here's a 61 millimeter piston. Stock is 57.4 millimeter. Um, a 155 kit would be 58.5. This is 61. Um, most people call them 171s, but it actually is like 169.9 uh, if you do the correct math. But just to show you that <laughs> that will eat that. I mean, that will swallow that. So just to give you an idea how big we're talking, it's pretty big. this. Let me see if I have a stock jug here. I guess the easiest way to tell would be just to kind of do that. So, it does look like that cylinder is taller. Is it four millimeters taller? Or eight millimeters taller? I don't know. But one way to find out would be There's an eight millimeter head to a bolt. And that looks like to me. So if that takes a stock crank without any spacing whatsoever, that pretty much looks like the eight millimeter difference right there. So I'm gonna assume that we don't need a spacer. And this is me just kind of thinking out loud through the whole thing. I don't know anything for sure. Like I said, this is uncharted territory for me. So, let's go ahead and put our supplied gaskets on there. Nice gasket. And I'm gonna slide this guy on here. And as far as the stud spacing, what people don't understand is they think, oh, well, you know, bore your, you know, I see a lot of people on Facebook give misinformation. It's just because they don't know any better. They they see there's a 232. They hear there's a, there's a 232 motor out there. Um, and just because it's capable, they think you can take any GY6 and bore it out to 232 or bore it out to 67 millimeter and whatnot. It's not the case. You could probably fit the stroker crank in an A case. Again, you'd have to space the cylinder up. Um, but just to show you, this is why you can't, because 
these studs don't line up with these holes. Like I'm crunching the studs to get them in there. And that's that's about as far down as I'm gonna push because right now I'm just making the studs go, you know, they're in a bind. So it's just not the case. Um, the biggest you can go on an A case is 63 millimeter. Um, without a stroke or crank, that gives you 180 cc's, I believe. Um, and when you do that, you start on A case, you start getting really close to this hole. Okay, I bored out a couple 63s for customers, and sometimes I can be a hit, like I'll have a hair of meat. But what I've started doing is actually um, I have a piece of tubing that I stick in there. I'll spray it down with WD-40, and then I'll take uh, some aluminum epoxy. I call it I forget the Aluma Bond or something. I forget what they call it. And I will patch it and then regrind it down um, to get that to work because it's just it, it gets and then you start shedding your stud meat away and everything. It's just real real sketchy. 63, but it can be done. It has been done. Um, but that's as big as you can go. You can't go 67 millimeter. That's why we're here because this is a B case motor. The studs are wider apart, um, and and that's the only thing allowing you to be able to do this kind of thing. Um, I'm just taking a look where I haven't looked before. And they did a real nice job with the case because my understanding is that this case here, you can buy it every, from their 180 kit that they have all the way to a 232 kit that the cases are actually the same. So it's already set up to accept a 63 or 67 millimeter um, cylinder. So what I'm gonna do now, Get my wrist pin out. Not nice. Everything is feels like it's been pre-oiled, and I am gonna oil it a little bit. insert the clip on this side first. Um, the style clip's not my favorite, but we'll make them work.
shot at me. <laughs> chain through. I'll leave this on there. So, whoops. Weighs it down a lot. Suck the rest of the cylinder there. slight dome to it but the lip of the lip is in the hole so that looks good bottom guide Figure out this head. Got parts for the head over here. And this all came in the box with the head, so guess I didn't need the chain. It was in there already. Yamaha genuine parts too, so it's a, with a couple things. Rocket. Okay. Have to assume that bolts to that side. We'll put cam cover. All right. Again, new to me, so we don't need that right away. What we will need. Apparently is this guy and this guy. Now, question is, I'm gonna take this out of the bag.
As soon as I figure it out, I will let you know. So, I got two bolts here. All right, so what I'm gathering so far is this. I haven't got it completely figured out yet. So there's a notch in the can. You can see it right in there. I got one threaded hole in the center. So I might take the valve cover off and take a look. But okay, so if I fit that on there in that groove, okay, and that's rolling the can. It stops there, and it stops there. Okay. That means it's stopping where, obviously, I don't, have, I don't have enough pressure to turn this over by hand to make the valves pop out. So that's the lobe hitting the rocker. That's the lobe hitting the rockers. Okay. Um, so I would imagine that top dead center is straight up and down. Because that's basically, you can see we're at about like 2 o'clock right there. The same amount on the other side, which would be like uh, 10 o'clock. I would assume that this guy goes down. Holds that in the place, and I really can't put this together till I get it there because I gotta weave the chain up, bring it up through the sprocket, and get this all lined up top dead center. Now, question is, we got this guy. So let me see something. And this might be some sort of retainer here because it looks like there's a tab. These bowls line up. Kind of makes sense to me. There's just one more thing to eliminate slipping. Two bolts here, which might be with the cover. <laughs> I can't get through it. But it looks like that's carved out to basically allow that to do what it's got to do. So never have done this before. I can imagine that I need to take this off. I need to bring the chain up through here, try and work this sprocket on there, get it up to the point, put this cover on here, and then get it bolted in.
I'll have that open the door. Heavy. some valve covers off too. But let's see if I can do this before or after I take the valve cover off. This is going to be tricky. Got roller rockers. Nice. And then basically both your exhaust valves, I would imagine, and then both of your uh, intake valve or exhaust and intake open at the same time. Whew! That's kind of nifty. But yeah, I think I need a little bit of extra room. So what I'm going to do is tighten the stuff down. There's this is like next level stuff. Sorry if I'm moving a little slow and taking my time with this, but I'm trying to be careful because, like I said, it's the first time I really laid eyes on this kind of stuff.
onto my chain to make sure. Oh, it is 13. Hmm. It looks like they didn't machine enough. That one they did. tighten there. Okay. Find a thinner socket. issue with. Yeah, it's really, really close. Let me see if I can get my cam strung up. And then what I think I'm going to have to do is find a 12 millimeter socket that I can lay down and make it thinner.
be this way. Yeah. Center is going to be right there. Mm -hmm. I think I've got it. it. I can see this being a bitch if the motor is where it should be. I gotta hold the motor steady. Sometimes it comes in very handy. Now, I don't know if I should be Loctite, putting Loctite on that, but. I'm gonna leave it as it is right now. Let's see what happens. All right. Um, I'd say my next step is going to have to be I need to make a socket that is going to be able to get in there and get out because I have to torque these down. So. My torque wrench is 3 8 drive, so I'm going to find a 12 millimeter um, 3 8 drive socket and stick it in the lathe and make it as thin as I can. Alright, so we found a 12 millimeter donor and uh, basically laid this down a, a socket. Hopefully, all it has to do, you know, we just basically 5 10 minutes of work right there, bang, done. Um, we just needed to get it in here, which got to work. So it just has to work once for right now. <laughs> so a little more room on this one nut would have made it, would have been a little nicer. But, uh, so I'm going to go to my standard 16. Sock in the drawer. So that worked out kind of good. All right. I'd say the next step is we need to put a, a tensioner in there and put our covers. Now I'm gonna think this far ahead, as far as shrouds and go and whatnot. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get the tensioner in there, we'll get the valve cover back on, vent cover back on over here, and then we'll uh, have some things I need to figure out before I go any further with this. Um, I have a couple of things figured out, but not all of them. I need two bolts for here.
Nice. All right, grab myself a tensioner. All right, so I'm gonna retract it. Yeah, I should have done that first. All right, let me put the gasket on and then retract it. Gonna go ahead and roll it over by hand once. Now I got the tensioner in. Everything's torqued down. I want to see how smooth she is. Nice. For top dead center, check my cam. Yep, my line's at the top. So she rolls over pretty good, compression wise. Hmm. I can't turn it over. <laughs> Couldn't turn it over. So, that should be something.
That is where we're at for now. She's just beautiful to look at. Get my garbage out of the way. That should be something. So, next step is we'll get the CVT on. I got to figure out what I'm doing for shrouds for this thing. I never looked that far ahead. And um, then it's on to, I have an intake port, but we have to figure out a carburetor for it. Um, so that'll be next. And then um, eventually we get her on the stand and get it fired up. But um, that's it for now. Um, hopefully, you know, this was as interesting to you as it was to me putting it together. Uh, if you need any parts, go to gotbuggies.com. Um, want to say a quick thank you to a couple people who help me out all the time um, with this stuff as far as, you know, the, the other vendors and businesses I work with. Uh, want to thank Matt Mania at Parts for Scooters. Uh, this is kind of his baby right here as far as, the, you know, this whole engine package. Um, Aaron Yoakum at uh, Carding Distributors, who is my Trailmaster uh, go-to. And... Um, Charlie Smith at WPS, Western Power Sports. So um, these guys, uh, they're great to work with. I'm not a huge business, so probably easy to overlook, but um, they all take the time to answer questions when I have them and, uh, and basically get me in the right direction when I come up with crazy ideas like this. So um, that's it for now. Uh, gotbuggies.com if you need parts. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the like button. See you guys later.